Good morning, a very warm welcome to St Hildeberg's Church here in Oilake on the Wirral. Let's just take a few moments and bring our thoughts to our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We say the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us then come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for the fifth Sunday of Lent, our special prayer for today. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world. Grant that by faith in him, who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading this morning is from the letter to Hebrews, chapter 5. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus predicts his death. Now there were some Greeks amongst them who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Glazalee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, 
it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honour the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, speak to us in the stillness as we look at your example and learn to, from you. In your name we ask it. Amen. Amen. We are facing great changes at the moment in very interesting but difficult times. We're starting to meet back in church. This week we will be reflecting on the fact that it is a year from the beginning of the first lockdown. We will be seeing the beginning of British summertime next weekend. We are beginning to take the road out of lockdown. We are facing difficult decisions and having to make tough decisions. There is a lot of fear of the unknown. We like to be in control of our own situations and it is hard to accept situations that are beyond our control. Our Bible readings today tell us about Jesus facing a huge upcoming crisis and we can learn so much from his example in how he dealt with it. In two weeks time we will be celebrating Easter, Jesus' resurrection and the resulting birth of the Christian church. But first will come Good Friday. Jesus had to face death by crucifixion. The writer to the Hebrews in our reading this morning tells us three things that happened to Jesus as he faced his ordeal. Firstly, Jesus offered up prayers and petitions. Could he be saved from the awful pain and suffering that was to come? The writer says Jesus offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. Jesus te John tells us that Jesus said, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Secondly, Jesus learned obedience. Even as Jesus was praying to be saved from death, he added these words, No, it was for this very reason that I came to this hour. Father, Glorify your name. He knew he had to go through the situation he was facing. He had come to earth for one main purpose, to provide a permanent route for people to find forgiveness. This was God's will for him. It was essential that he followed this very difficult road to the cross. Later in his gospel, Jesus records Jesus as saying, these things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, 
But take courage. I have overcome the world. Yesterday, a friend sent me a short reflection on this verse, and I want to read a few extracts from that. The words, in this world you will have trouble, are not words we want to hear. Where there is light, darkness seeks conflict. Jesus doesn't say he will solve all our problems. The peace of Jesus doesn't come from the disappearance of problems. It comes in the midst of problems. We are victorious with Jesus. Thirdly, Jesus became the source of eternal salvation. If Jesus hadn't prayed and obeyed, we would be hopelessly lost. The well-known verse, John 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Our eternal hope is in God through Jesus' death on the cross. We are facing change which is not just seasonal change. Seasons come and go. Spring follows winter, as we can see as we look around our gardens and as we go for walks. Recently, someone described the changes we are facing as being seismic rather than seasonal. When seismic change takes place, things don't just go back to normal afterwards. There are lasting changes. I found this a very interesting thought as when Jesus died, there was an earthquake. And again on Easter day, Jesus' death resulted in permanent changes for the people alive then, which are still pertinent to those of us living here today. Further on in Hebrews, in the Passion Version, there's a lovely summary of the, all of this in these words. We look away from the unnatural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this. Because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. So consider carefully how Jesus faced such intense opposition from sinners who oppose their own souls so that you won't become worn down and cave in under life's pressures. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, please open our eyes to see you. Don't let our circumstances and troubles let us lose sight of you. Help us to be anchored in your peace. Amen. Thank you, Ruth. We reflect on Ruth's words by listening to a piece of music by Rob.
we stand for the creed. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world to come. Amen. Even in the darkest moments, love gives hope. As we pray, we are united as one family. So let us pause and find a moment of peace as we lift up our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with us today as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers for others and for ourselves and keep us in your care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father in heaven, look down in mercy on all those throughout the world who are struggling at this time. Whether it is because of issues related to the COVID virus or because of disputes between tribes and nations, Many are living in fear of their lives and struggling to meet their daily needs. Sickness is rife and many cannot survive. We pray also for our link parish in Opiniani, where there are many struggles and conflicts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask for wisdom for our government and all those responsible for different aspects of our lives here in UK. There is so much turmoil and contradiction which adds to our confusion and stress. We ask for calmness and peace and that we will truly learn what it means to love our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, be with our clergy and ministry team and church wardens and all those involved in planning the way forward for St Hildeburg's as we move forward out of lockdown. We pray for wisdom and safety in all that is done. Show us what we should be doing to reach out to our community here in Hoylake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our schools and in particular for those who have been overstretched by homeschooling and maintaining open schools where essential. We ask for the mental health of all and ask for protection for the children who have found this such a difficult time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness be their consolation. In their anxiety be their hope. In their darkness be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross and reigns with you in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
We pray for the many who have lost loved ones over the past year. We particularly pray today for the family and loved ones of Anne Irene Stevens, whose funeral takes place on Wednesday. Comfort her family and friends and bring peace to all. Oh God, help us to trust you. Help us to know you are with us and help us to believe that nothing can separate us from your love revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ruth. Let us stand for the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Sign of peace from a distance. Bless you, Lord God, all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made, that we come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Bless you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will come for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, as we obey his command. Send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine are poured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, and gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence. His sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you this bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us into your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ 
and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And we say together, Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands are unclean, our hearts are unprepared. We are not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table, but you, Lord, the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse us and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. body of Christ broken for me. Blood of Christ shed for me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we say the post-communion prayer together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the spirit life give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow in him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones this day and forevermore. Amen. So let us go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.
In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.